Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, today's human design weather is the gate 52, which is called concentration. Okay, so, uh, so we've got the sun in the gate 52, which is coming off the uh, top right, um, right side of the top of the root center. The, um, this transit started this morning, June 25th in the morning. It'll go until July 1st in the morning. And the earth is in the gate 58, which is the joy of life. So we've got the 52 coming off the top of the root and we got the 58 joy of life coming off the left side of the root center at the very bottom. And so we start the week with three centers uh, defined and that'll be till Monday. That's the, uh, the Ajna, the throat for the 2343 that we've had for a while. And then the 3536 because um, Sorry, Mercury is in 35. And then that'll go away on Monday. And um, we still have the 30, which is all about extremes um, down here in Saturn. And so that'll stay. Um, but then we add, then the three moves into Mars and that will uh, form a channel with the gate 60, which is still in Pluto. And so that's gonna, uh, the solar plexus will go away and then the sacral and the root become defined. And so basically the first part of the week, we're going to, going to feel like manifestors. And then the second part of the week, we're going to feel like generators because um, with the sacral and the root defined, we're all going to feel like generators. So whether you're a sacral being or not, you're going to feel like you've got this energy. So just be aware of it. Um, you might feel a little let down after um, in about a week after the three goes away. Um, but, but basically the sacral energy is going to give energy to everyone. So with this gate 52, we usually call it concentration, um, but in the I Ching, they call it keeping still mountain or stillness in the original I Ching. And so this is the temporary and self-imposed inaction for the benefit of assessment. So basically it's being quiet so that you can kind of assess what's going on in your life. Um, it's, you know, you can think of it as meditation. You can think of it as just sitting on the couch and doing nothing for a while. You can think of it however you like, but it's basically being still and, and allowing yourself to think. The incarnation crosses this week are the cross of service, stillness, and demands. And then in the gate 58, we've got the joy of life, which is always just a happy kind of energy. It's the joyous uh, or vitality in the original I Ching, and it's where stimulation is the key to joy. So doing stuff, being happy, um, you know, keeping yourself stimulated, if you will, uh, with whatever activities you enjoy is the key to joy. Um, I also, you know, happen to... Uh, pay attention to Abraham Hicks and her whole thing is that joy comes from um, growth and freedom, right? So it's, it's growth, learning different things, becoming more confident, having more freedom, and then um, in the circle, moving toward joy. Um, in the Gene Keys, dissatisfaction is the shadow, vitality is the gift, and bliss is the CD. So as Richard says um, in the Gene Key 52, where shadow is the stress, the gift is restraint and the CD is stillness. When we're stressed, time is always running either too fast or too slow. So um, basically his, the repressive version of, the, um, of this kind of energy is where we're stuck, right? And the, where, where it's um, uh, the reactive nature is to be in activity all the time. So neither one of those are still necessarily. They're, they're, they're different forms of activity, really stuck energy and really active energy. Neither one of them is stillness. And so the gift is restraint. It's coming to the middle, basically, finding a quiet place, coming to the stillness and allowing yourself to, to think and to process and to figure out what you really need to do in a different, in whatever situation it is. This is also the energy of sitting down and completing a project or writing a book or writing an article or being creative in some way. Um, it's really a very potent kind of energy, um, but it is about the stress that he's talking about is really a, um, a communal stress, a community stress or a, um, a worldwide stress, if you will. I mean, it, it could be, it's, it's any group that has stress, right? It's not just your own personal stress, but it, it um, is affecting us. It's, it's, a, it's a mental anxiety basically that, ex that affects us from everybody else's aura. So it's gonna be more intense, for example, in cities and towns where you've got more and more people. It's gonna be less intense where there's a rural um, or farm-like situation. Um, those people are going to feel it less, this you know, worldwide stress, they'll feel it less, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna feel it. 
people are still feeling this stress. Whether it's the, the war or politics or Supreme Court decisions or shootings or anything else like that, it, it affects all of us. Um, we are all still one and it's hard to get to stillness when the world is in such turmoil. So one of the key, he says, one of the key manifestations of stress is the inability to escape mental anxiety. It's, it's where, you know, the monkey mind is going on all the time and it's really hard to get still. Um, he also says it's through restraint that human power can be harnessed in a creative way, um, which is a nice way of saying that if we can get still, if we can get quiet, we can be a lot more creative. We've got a number of people who were born in this um, time frame, including, um, including a number of writers. Um, I included them because, um, uh, who did I include, like George or Orwell, uh, St. Exuberi, um, Pearl Buck, um, I thought I had a few others, but, but there are a lot of writers born during this time because this is a concentration kind of gate. Um, and it is a, a gate that allows one to be creative when you can be still. So some people are more still than others, but uh, today we'll be talking about Elon Musk um, in the profile. So um, Mr. Musk, who happens to be the uh, wealthiest man in the world at the moment, um, he was born on June 28th in 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa, uh, to South African parents. Um, he's a manifesting generator with a 3-5 profile, and he's a right angle cross of service. He's thought of as, you know, besides being the wealthiest man in the world, he is the president of and CEO of uh, Tesla and SpaceX. He's considered an engineer, an industrial designer, technology entrepreneur, philanthropist, and, um, and there is an Elon Musk Foundation uh, of which he is also president and also the Boring Company or Boring Corporation, um, which, is, um, which is kind of a funny name, but the Boring uh, is because he bores through the earth in a huge way to create tunnels for transportation possibly, or you know, basically subways. Um, and they were trying to do something in California, but that didn't quite work out. Anyway, given um, his chart, he's um, got, uh, let's see, five centers defined, four centers open. He does have a completely open uh, or pretty much open head and, and Ajna. He also has the open will center, which was a little bit of a surprise. And he has, actually has the open um, solar plexus, which is also a little bit of a surprise um, given his um, demeanor. He is uh, a manifesting generator, archetypical manifesting generator with the 3420. He also has the channel 214, which is called the beat, but it's all about the money. He's got the 14, which is the gate of money. And then he's got two, which is all about um, allocation of resources, how to save, how to spend, and how to, how to create it. Um, he does have the sacral defined, and then he's got this 952, which is all about, you know, as we're talking about today, the gate 52 is all about concentration. The gate nine is all about focus. So he's very much able to focus on a project and get it done. And, you know, probably explains a lot of the all-nighters that he spends in, the, um, in, his, in his factories and getting projects done. Um, it, it, it's pretty amazing, actually, when you think about it, that this is 2022, and in 2012, the first SpaceX rocket went up. And so he is somebody who's gotten a lot done in the last 10 years. It certainly made him wealthy, um, but he's also, you know, the prices of, well, at least the stock price of Tesla has gone up. I think SpaceX is still privately held. He's also got this channel 1858, which is um, besides the 58, which is that joy of life. He's also got the 18, which is all about correction and making things better and improving things and editing things. And he's got it both conscious and unconscious. Um, so it's in his incarnation cross on the design side. And he's got it down here in Uranus, which is always very unique way of doing things um, in, in, the, um, in the conscious side. So um, that's going to you know, kind of affect the way he tries to do things. He also has the gate 48, which is all about depth and getting to the bottom of things and really knowing something very um, uniquely, but it does give him a little bit of a um, inadequacy, fear of inadequacy sometimes, which, you know, I would say shows up sometimes in the way he talks um, about things.
And um, he's, he's probably a lot more confident and a lot more competent than he lets on sometimes um, by the way he says things, but it could be this fear of inadequacy. The 18 is the, the fear of authority, or I, as I usually call it, the disdain for authority. And that probably accounts for some of the comments that he makes um, with regard to other authority figures. Um, the 38 is the gate of the fighter, so he kind of knows what's worth fighting for. The 39 is um, very evident. Um, he's got that in the, he got it in his Mercury, conscious Mercury. So he's a bit of a provocateur. He likes to communicate in a provocative way. And there's no, um, you know, that's not, not a surprise at all. Um, I've got the 49, which is all about principles and creating a revolution. He has basically created a revolution in electric cars, in space travel, in reusable space travel, in, you know, hopefully the way we can create um, uh, solar uh, panels, although I well, that's still part of Tesla. And also, um, so, you know, some different kinds of renewable energy. And then he's also got the, um, um, the foundation that he's part of, and he's got the um, AI group, and he was originally part of PayPal. So a lot of um, principles and really created a revolution in a lot of different um, industries. He's got the Gate 30, um, which also comes as no surprise. It's all about um, uh, intensity, right? He's uh, no one would accuse him of being, uh, you know, just kind of uh, too light in, in the way he reacts. He's usually pretty intense. He's got the Gate 40, which is all about aloneness. It is in his moon, um, so he probably prefers working alone to a certain extent and creating the things he's doing. That while he's got many, many employees. He, you know, likes to be his own person and doesn't really feel the need to uh, work well with others, let's say. He's got the 45, Gate of the King, no surprise there. Um, 13, the Gate of the Listener, which is all about um, being able to listen to people and understand them. And it, it really gives them a feeling that he, that, they, that he can be trusted when they talk to him. Seven is all about, you know, leadership, small d democratic leadership. Um, the 17 is about opinions. The four is about um, uh, answers, the possibility of answers. So he probably thinks he has a lot of answers, even though his head is very open uh, and the Ajna is very open as well. Lots of information going through here in and around, but, but also very um, changeable, right? Flexible, changeable, uh, mutable, you know, things change. And then the 23 is all about break, uh, basically being able to speak um, from his um, very bright head um, and Ajna about what's going on and explain it to people in a way that they understand. So, um, and he's got the 3-5 profile, which is all about, through three is all about trying things, the experiential learner, and the five is the, the heretic, um, which means that he's um, got something different to say. And I think we'd all agree that he does have something different to say. So happy birthday, Elon. Um, I hope you have a great week. I hope you're able to um, sit down, perhaps, be still, find some stillness, find some quiet before all the 4th of July holiday, uh, you know, experiences and expectations start in your life and in your world. Um, this, this gate is, or this week is usually a little quieter. The run up to the 4th of July allows us to you know, kind of take a little breather and, um, and then enjoy the holiday. So I hope you enjoy this week, get a little time by yourself if you can, and um, stay well. Thanks. Take care.